On the 8th of April, we're going to have a total solar eclipse where the moon completely covers the sun and the sky goes pitch black completely, but only for a brief moment. Now, this specific eclipse is unique because it's the last eclipse that we're going to get to see in the United States for the next 20 years. So I got to get the camera out. I'm going to take you through the entire process of what goes into photographing the solar eclipse from what lens I bought to what apps I'm using to track the movement of the sun and the moon to how it feels to witness something so so trippy and so like mind-blowing it's so cool oh look look Holy <laughs> now if you know me you know i like to push myself creatively so we're not just going to get a regular shot of just the moon and the sun in the sky we're going to do something different this is my idea i'm trying to get a silhouette of a lone cowboy standing on the top of a mountain. You can see the moon and the sun there behind him, shrouding him in like an air of mystery. It's it's gonna be incredibly difficult because we're shooting so zoomed in, but it's gonna be epic. There's three factors that I'm considering when it comes to choosing exactly where I'm gonna shoot this thing. Firstly, I need a nice little vantage point for my lone cowboy to stand on top of so I can photograph him nicely in the middle of the sky. I need a vantage point. Secondly, and probably more importantly, the location has to be in the path of totality. This is where you're going you're gonna to be able to see the eclipse. On NASA's website, it's saying the path is going to sweep from Durango, Mexico, all the way through Texas, past the Midwest, into the northeast of the United States. I found a nice little mountain, a nice little vantage point for my lone cowboy in a spot in Durango in Mexico that is almost on the center of that line. So I bought my ticket to Durango and I thought I was gonna be there. The third factor that you have to look for is the weather. It's gotta be a completely clear, cloudless day, not a single cloud in the sky. So I bet you can imagine how frustrated I was when I found out what the forecast for tomorrow was. All right, how about the cloud cover here? Well, here's the latest highest res model. There's the path of the eclipse. Texas still looks like it's pretty cloudy through a majority of that. And you can see about that if it's not cloudy. Clouds are still look like they're going to be an issue across parts of the path of totality. What's going on? It looks like we have rain and storms and cloud completely covering up the entire path of totality all the way down from Mexico to Texas. My creative partner Tucker and I just sat down and began to research and try and see if we can find Find yet another location where we can get our lone cowboy standing on top of a mountain with. That's the most difficult part of this is that we have to find something. You have to find a place where there's good weather, a place where there's a tall mountain, <laughs> and a place that is possible for us to get back to the computer and edit quickly. Right. 14 hours of research later, we found our spot. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but it's 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 very it's very interesting. It's time to pack. I'm going to tell you a few of the things that make photographing an eclipse so incredibly technical and difficult. Firstly, I'm shooting at a thousand millimeter. That's very very is so zoomed in. The depth of field is incredibly shallow. So, uh, if your model moves from here to like here they're out of focus. On top of all that, the moon is moving across the sky so fast, so you're constantly readjusting your composition, moving your tripod legs. To add to that, the, the entire period of totality lasts only three minutes. It's like such a brief, short window, so the pressure's up, and then the lighting is changing so quick from light to almost near darkness to light again. It's incredibly difficult, but this is the point where you just have to sit back and trust yourself. You've done the research, you found the spot, you've booked the hotel, all the gear is ready to go. You've checked the weather twice. You just got to chill and everything will just fall into place. This is the last bit of sunlight that we have. I'm just hoping that it can just stick around because this, these clouds, these clouds do not look good. <laughs> the last time I saw a solar eclipse was seven years ago. I was, I was 23 years old. It was, it was such a magic. It left me completely speechless. But one thing I took away from that experience was that sharing the experience of witnessing an eclipse with people makes it all the more better. It makes it even more enjoyable than getting the actual hero shot itself. So and that's why I have a car full of the homies Woo! here. One for a road trip. On a scale of one to ten, how stoked are you guys about this? Eleven. So I'm gonna Eleven, tell you the kind of gear that I'm shooting this with. I'm shooting this whole eclipse with a Canon R5 and a 100 to 500 millimeter lens that I'm using in conjunction with a 2x converter to get me all the way up to a thousand millimeter. Are you guys excited? Yeah, vibe check! Shooting solar eclipses for me always happens in three phases. In phase one, I do a whole bunch of planning and preparation, but it always devolves into a huge chaotic mess. Alright, right, you ready? Let's do... 
Let's do a, uh, this is what the plan of action looks like. We're gonna do, start up by setting audio on Tucker's camera, who's gonna be pointed towards the car. So many cameras to set up and time lapses. Um, what am I looking for? Multiple exposure. Set up the super zoom. Set up, super zoom, yeah. super zoom set up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time is finally upon us. Oh, we have like, what? Hold on. Like 30 more minutes till, till the eclipse happens. I'm gonna track the movement of the sun and the moon using this app called PhotoPills to see exactly when it's about time to start this time lapse and start shooting this stuff. I've waited for this for over, over seven years. Run to the grassy spot. Onto the what? Run to the grassy spot. All right, here we go. Dude. The thousand solar filter. Oh, forgot the solar filter. Forgot the filter? Yeah. Now we've entered phase two. I'm noticing all the color changes around me, but there's still equally as much chaos. It's like straight out of Dune. This is this is going to be really cool. Yeah. Oh. This is why this is why I keep freaking chasing this thing, dude. Those are two floating rocks just up there, floating in front of each other. There we go. <laughs> oh my god. The colors are just like a little bit different. It just it looks a little weird. It looks it like a little bit more silver or something. We're about halfway. Our shadows are so crisp. Weird, trippy. Um, down a little bit, down a little bit. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Look how dark it is. Look how dark it is. This is not oh, camera settings. Move down. No, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, okay. Whoa. Oh, oh. Is this it? my Sorry, god. About, oh. Is this it? This is it. Oh, we are in totality, my bro. Oh. Is this it? Yes. This is it. I can't begin to express how incredibly magical this experience is. Every single day you see the sun and the moon in the sky, but once in a lifetime, the moon decides to cross in front of the sun, and all of a sudden the tiny little things that are up in the sky turn into celestial bodies. Like they feel, it feels three dimensional. It feels like they're actually out there. It kind of makes my, my uh, makes me feel so tiny. It makes my, my worries feel so infinitesimal and so small. Uh, it literally feels like that. It's go, 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 and then all of a sudden, pew, everything comes to a halt. It's like it goes so fast and it ends so abruptly. It's kind of part of the reason why I keep chasing this stuff. All right, that's it. That's how you photograph the solar eclipse. If you can't tell, I'm a little bit dissatisfied with the kind of stuff that I got, but it's a, such a quick and fleeting moment, so it means I'm gonna have to do this yet another time, one more time. The next one is in Iceland in 2026. So maybe, maybe I'm a solar eclipse chaser. Hope you enjoyed this. Stop watching and go make something.